coming to you live from the studios of Franciscan University, Steubenville. It's the Ramblin' with Rob show. The show with the DJ who can't stop talking. And our SD card is in, which means we're good to record it. Okay, we're going to start this one over again. <clears throat> in five, four, three, two, one. Coming to you live <laughs> from the studios of Franciscan <laughs> University of <laughs> Steubenville. <laughs> it's the Ramblin' with Rob show, the show of the DJ who can't stop talking. Which is, of course, not an FN station, but I'm making it into an AM talk radio show. Dear listeners, I have exciting news for you. You see, uh, there are only two weeks left in the semester until finals, which means I'm only going to have two more episodes unless I'm crazy and have one during finals week, which I'm probably not going to. And I was thinking about it because I'll be going to Gomming uh, next semester, study abroad in Austria. Speaking of which, I'm going to queue up a nice Gomming ad, which I found for the first time. But anyways, um, so I was like, you know, I'm only going to be with the seniors and the super seniors and the super super seniors um, for like, you know, a few more weeks, which means that there is a few people that, you know, this is my last opportunity to ever have them on my radio show, which also assumes that I'm going to keep doing the show after I uh, after the semester. But we'll see about that. And um, so I was like, you know, out of all these people who will be leaving and all who will, I will have to be saying goodbye to within the next uh, few weeks. Who of them would I just really kick myself in the future if I never had on my radio show? You know, because there are some, you know, pretty amazing people, great personalities, who I'll be happy to say goodbye to, having to say goodbye to. And, uh, you know, I was like, there are two people who come to mind that I just would really hate to not have on my show when I had the chance. And I have very exciting news for you, dear listeners. Tonight, we have one of those two men on the show, and his name is Dennis Fu. Woo! Hi, <laughs> listeners! <laughs> Dennis. Uh, well, actually, Dennis, and by the way, next week, dear listeners, we have a man on named Joseph Tweed, who is also a, a oh, character. Dear. But uh, that'll be for next week. For tonight, we have um, plenty of fun, I'm sure, to go around. So, Dennis... How about you tell us about yourself? You know, where are you from? Uh, you know, how old are you? Have you been here since Father Michael has been here? Because I know you... Before Father Michael's time <laughs> was, I am... <laughs> <laughs> Hi, listeners. I am Dennis Vu. I am from Stockton, California. Oh. I am Dennis Vu. I am from Stockton, California, which is located near Sacramento. I am 22 years old, and I am a super... Super senior. Yeah, uh, Dennis, when did you graduate from high school? 2013. Oh my gosh, I graduated in 2016. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm ancient. Yeah, so I mean, I think everybody knows you. Literally everybody knows you on this campus because you've been here for so long. Yes. Um, well, actually, I, I kind of wanted to start off this show um, with a funny story that I heard. Uh, the other day from one of our fellow Californians, I think he's from like San Jose, and he was telling me that when he before he came to, to Franciscan, he was involved with youth ministry in his parish, and they did like uh, oh gosh, what's that flashing? We have, I think we have a call. We have a call. Oh, did somebody call? Hello. Hello. Is this a caller? <laughs> yes, it's a caller. Oh, hi, Ramblin' Rob. Hello, it's my godmother. How are you? I'm it's here. your godmother, Robbie. <laughs> hi, here. Rob. Tigger, how about you introduce yourself to us? Well, um, my name is Linda, and I'm Ramblin' Rob's crazy godmother. <laughs> and I don't want to take up any time, but, Robbie, yes. we can't hear your guests. Oh, really? Oh. Oh, wait, wait. We, they're, they're not coming through. Uh... Dennis, keep talking. And I just don't want to miss them because you have such 
incredibly interesting guests on. Yeah, we, we really And do. I don't want to miss one second of hearing them, but we can't hear them. Danny, keep, keep, keep talking. Hello. Okay, so anyway, um, Tigger, can you hear I've that? missed you in the last few. Yes, I'm here. Oh, but can you hear Dennis? I, I, I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you're back on the, on the air, Rob, because <laughs> it's you. the only time I hear from you is on the radio. Um, but <laughs> anyway, love your show and can't wait to hear about these two gentlemen that uh, are your great friends and great human beings. Thank you. So did you fix it? Uh, can you, you tell me. Can you hear him? Okay. Well, hold on now. Hold he's on. Talk, he's talking into the microphone right now, so if you can't hear him, then it, that's a problem. I can kind of hear you a little bit. Is that better? I can't hear anything. Oh, can you hear that? Is that better? No. Talk loud. Talk loud, Dennis. Should we get Tyler? Tyler! Tyler! The second microphone isn't working. Yes, it's on, I think. What a mess. <laughs> what a mess, Rob. <laughs> well, we, to be fair, uh, Tigger, we just got a new soundboard, so I, I have a few okay, controls. Okay, that's fine. There's you know, before well, just struggle along yeah. and do your best, Robbie. That's all we've ever wanted from you is to do your best. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay, is, I'll talk is, to you soon. Is, bye is, now. Okay, Good bye. luck. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, Dennis, talk, talk. Hello, hello, hello. It seems like you should be able to hear that. Oliver Regina. <laughs> yeah, wait. Callers. Uh, I, I think if we had a caller call us again uh, to confirm if you can I hear know. Dennis. Dennis, talk. Hello. Oliver oh, that's Regina. That, that's I can hear that really well through the, through the headphones. Yeah, I think so. Okay, cool. Thanks. Ma, tell me. Do I have to reintroduce myself now? Yeah. Uh, yeah, wait, wait. Can, can you... Uh, I don't know if I can hear myself now through the headphones. Yeah, okay. yeah, I think I can. Okay, callers, um, <clears throat> you might want to call in if you can't hear either Dennis or myself. But I think we are good. And if you can, please call in. Yes, true. How about the? No. Oh, oh, now this is. Oh, this is this is a good sound quality. Okay. Now. I think we're good to go. Okay, now. We have the option of just starting the whole show over again, uh, but I think I'm going to go away from that option. Now, just one thing. Uh, actually, yeah, sure. So, if you were wondering why I called my godmother Tigger, <laughs> it's because... I was wondering that. Yeah, so my... <clears throat> I, I, I mean, this is the way I've heard the story. I was not even born yet, I don't think. But my sisters, I have two sisters. Uh -huh. One is five years older than me one is six years older than me okay i think yeah that sounds about right and uh and so when they were young they were into this like they were like they went through this phase of watching winnie the pooh a lot uh -huh. and so they like loved winnie the pooh and so they started calling my godmother tigger and my aunt who's close to us pooh and ever since then, the names have just stuck so uh, we still call them tigger pooh okay so that's why i called her tigger but her real name's linda but you can call it Tigger if you want to. I don't All know right. if you ever talk to her again in your life, but if you do, then you can call it Tigger. Uh, okay. Now, listeners, as you have heard me build them up, we have a very special guest tonight. His name is Dennis, and I'm going to let Dennis introduce himself. So go ahead now that, now that we can hear you. Hello. Um, on the off chance that you're a Franciscan student and you don't know who I am, I am Dennis Vu. I am a super duper senior, as Robbie likes to describe me as I am 23 years old and I am from Stockton California lovely town but not not really yeah I've I've heard mediocre things it's, a, it's a very mediocre it. town yeah uh, there's a there's a TOR uh, friar named brother Augustine oh yes I know him okay yeah he goes to the only parish in my diocese that I would want to go to really yes okay that's I mean that's good yeah um 
They're one of those outdated Latin mass parishes. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. That may be a topic of conversation tonight, by the way. Uh, liturgy stuff, whatever. Okay, wonderful. But uh, one thing I, I did want to talk about the story I was going to say is so there's this guy um, who, uh, so he's from San Jose. Uh, he's a grad student here now. Uh huh. Um, and he was telling me a story when he was doing youth ministry at his parish, confirmation ministry. They had like a charismatic type of retreat for the for the uh, confirmation uh-huh. candidates. And during this retreat, the um, the can the their sponsors had the chance to bring them to like prayer teams. Uh huh. And the sponsors had the chance to say like, yeah, we want to pray for this gift wi- for our candidate or whatever. Uh-huh. Now. It, for the listeners who don't know, Dennis, would you be able to inform us of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that one would normally pray for? In let's like let's say like wisdom or uh, understanding yeah, or I mean, fear wisdom, of the Lord, understanding, counsel, counsel, knowledge, knowledge fortitude, yeah, piety, fear of the Lord, right? And then the charismatic gifts, I guess, you know, like the gift of speaking in tongues or, or prophecy, prophecy, healing, yeah. yeah. Okay, so anyways, these are these are some of the gifts that would be. If, if if a person was well catechized about what the gifts of the Holy Spirit were, they would they would ask perhaps the prayer team to pray for these gifts for the candidate. Uh-huh. But this is not what happened with this, <laughs> this particular uh, confirmation uh, candidate. So this guy he brings his uh, his candidate and he's a sponsor, and he goes he he tells the prayer team, um, you know, I just really want to pray and ask the Lord to give Jimmy the gift of basketball. (laughs) 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 So So, that is what happens when you don't uh, give good catechesis on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You You want people praying for the gift of basketball. (laughs) That's hilarious. Yeah. Anyways, I thought you'd enjoy that story. I, I might have to ask for that at prayer teams next time. I pray to <laughs> Or you could pray for the gift of um, a little bit more muscle on your bones. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, going to the port for adoration is such penance because the pews are really hard. And there's not a lot of... Um, you don't have any cartilage on your I don't have a whole lot of cartilage. Yep, yep. Well, Dennis, I honestly... This is, again... Um, a show that's going to live up to its name because I have absolutely nothing prepared except to tell that story about the basketball, okay. which lasted about two minutes. Um, I just got a text message from my dad, <laughs> which says, <laughs> I can't hear Dennis. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I can't hear Dennis boo. It's uh, boo. That's okay. I can't hear Dennis boo. Speak into microphone. <laughs> so, uh, if, if, uh, Maybe if you could speak into the microphone a little bit more, Dennis. Right. Just like hello. Yeah, that's hello. much better. Okay. So like within, keep it within like six inches or so. Okay, this is like this. I feel like uh, this is like this space is so claustrophobic. Yeah, it, it is a small closet. There's no denying that. That's There's for like sure. There's like Ziploc bags behind my head, <laughs> and the wall and the door is like an inch to my right. <laughs> well, you know, our our we don't have a whole lot of funds here on the Rambling at Rob show, so <clears throat> Rambling at Rob show. So, anyways. Well, Dennis, um, what would you like to talk about? Um, I don't know. What would you like to talk about, Robbie? <laughs> You're the one who invited me on this show. Uh, well, callers, if you have any ideas, you can call in. But let me see if I... Let me refer to my notes. Um, yeah, okay. So, so one thing I guess I could ask you about is now that you've lived in the Midwest for like six years. And Five Five okay, five years, and I know you've done Totus Tuus in North Carolina. Yes, in the great diocese of Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. Um, now I'm curious. I personally, because I I have done you know I was in the Midwest this whole summer in Wisconsin, mm-hmm. and I've been going to Milwaukee a lot lately for whatever reason, for various reasons. Uh, and I've really come to appreciate the Midwestern culture just in general. Uh, kind of culture in the Midwest. Okay, let me rephrase that. The Christian values that are still somewhat inherent in the Midwest uh, as compared yeah. to, say, in California. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know. 
like the more I'm here, the kind of less and less I uh, have an interest in moving back to California. I have yeah. almost zero interest in moving back to California. Okay. Um, I mean, I mean, it'd be nice to live in Southern California. Weather's perfect. Yeah, I mean that's true. I mean, um, but it's so expensive. It is very expensive. That's yeah. that is true. Gas is expensive. I mean, I think housing's expensive. No, okay. Let me ask you this: If it was, if let's just say the the standard of living was equal to elsewhere in the country, uh-huh. would you still be interested in moving back to California? I should probably no, no. Okay, yeah. See, I kind of enjoy the, the Midwest. I kind of I enjoy. I don't like winter. And spring's not really much of a season here. Like there's still snow on the ground during spring. Yeah. Um, other than that, I really like it. Oh, I so actually, I don't like the humidity either. But. <laughs> okay, so you don't like the winter, you don't like the spring because spring doesn't really exist, and you don't like the summer. But you know what? Fall autumn is really, is really nice. nice. I'm, autumn yeah, fall, is great. Fall is very nice. I will really miss fall if I move back to California. Uh, what I really like beautiful. is so when I was like in grade school and middle school, high school. I was really into like American history. Okay. And there's a lot of like American history, you know, out here. Yeah. Um, especially like Revolutionary War. History. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's true. I mean, I think I think there's some really rich history in California too, with the Franciscans and everything like that. Yeah. From an early time, but um, not necessarily what you'd learn in terms of like um, your U.S. history class yeah. necessarily. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So uh, yeah, for me. Uh, um, yeah, I just, I've, I've come to see, uh, yeah, just like, it's nice to be in a place where, like, you walk into Wendy's, and if you listen closely, there's, like, praise and worship music, like, on the the speakers and stuff like that. Pretty cool. Um. Oh, you could get that in California if you walked into Chick-fil-A. True. True. Well, actually, would you? Yeah, okay. Chick Fil. Do you not patronize Chick Fil A, Robbie? I do. <laughs> I do. I mean, when I'm home, it's it's always a dilemma because I'm like, well, there's In and Out, and there's also Chick Fil A, and there's also Panda Express. None of which. Okay, we have Panda here. Express is not authentic Asian food. Okay, I'm not saying it is, but I'm just saying we don't have any of that here. Uh-huh. So it's always a dilemma. But yes. Yeah, Dennis, I'm glad we I don't do have Panda Chick-fil-A. Express here. I wouldn't oh. go to it anyways. I'm sure. Oh yeah, I just went to the Sesame Girl the other night. At the bottom of the hill for our listeners who don't know. And um, I ordered chow mein chicken, like a chicken chow mein. Man, it was making n- me hungry. It was nothing like I was expecting. It was like a vegetable dish. It was like, wow. Okay, maybe you're thinking of lo mein. Yeah, well, that's what I was expecting. I was expecting like noodles. Yeah. But yeah. it was not like that. Yeah, I don't like chow mein either. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, it was okay, but it was just, it, yeah, like I said, it wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> but it was a healthier dish than I was, you know, ordered thinking in my head. So. Anyways, um, I guess that taught me a lesson in, you know, the need to eat healthier, whether I like it or not. All right. Yeah, I could use some fat. And yeah, opposite for you. Yeah. Um, so, Dennis, liturgy. <laughs> liturgy, yes, liturgy. The source and summit of the Christian life. Yes, I suppose, because the Eucharist yes. comes to us in the liturgy. Yes. Yeah, so... You can't have the Eucharist if you don't have liturgy. True. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm interested, Dennis. I, so let me, let me give you a little bit of a, a taste of where I'm coming from here. So I never once attended a Latin Mass before I came to Steubenville. Mm-hmm. Um, and at first... I know the microphone... This did microphone it, did it like is <laughs> the configuration. Okay, there we go. But yeah. Um, and at first, I'm not going to lie, it was, well, we won't, the only one I went to was the low Mass. It with the PDP with Father Gregory, mm-hmm. and it was it just I had, I had really mm-hmm. no idea what was happening, uh-huh. and I had a hard time uh, like praying and stuff like that mm-hmm. with it. I was just kind of really confused all the mm-hmm. time, trying to figure out what was going on. Um, and since then I've been to maybe not very many, only probably like three or four high masses, maybe five. Um, but I I must say that the more I go the more intrigued I am with it and the more beautiful I find it to be. Mm-hmm. And my desire for, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't necessarily like want to be in the FSSP um, mm-hmm. or in like only celebrate the Latin mass, but I would like to be able to celebrate both forms of the mass 
as a priest, especially because I think that um, there's just uh, so much. I think once you understand the Latin Mass better, you come to appreciate the the Novus Ordo mm-hmm. better. Yeah. Um, so I just I'm I'm interested in in your own love for the Latin Mass and why why I don't know like if you could just talk about that. Yes. Why go to a liturgy where the priest doesn't face me and mumbles at the wall in a foreign language? Yes, please. And maybe a little bit more into the microphone. And sometimes. <laughs> hmm. Okay. That's much better. All right. Ah. Uh, okay. I just I feel so claustrophobic in here. Like, like the microphone's right in front of my mouth, and there's like a <laughs> cork board like right behind my head. Yes. With a bunch of like Ziploc bags dangling from it. All right. We can change seats if you want to change seats. Uh, no, I, I'll just offer it up. Um, <laughs> all right. So, I mean, I grew up in California going to just, you know, typical, you know, typical liturgy, mm-hmm. you know, ordinary form in English. Sure. Um, and I think, so when I was growing up, I, I would also watch a lot of EWTN. Oh, okay. Yeah, I watched a lot of EWTN. And um, I was really attracted by the way they celebrate Mass, daily Mass on EWTN. Uh, it's very beautiful. Uh, they use very nice vestments and nice chalices and vessels for the altar, and they use, like, Latin and stuff. Um, although EWTN has Mass in English. But they use a lot of, like, good music and, like, Gregorian chant, like, Latin Mass parts. Yeah. Um, and so I was really drawn to that. I, um, I thought it... No, it was it was very different from my experience, but in a good way. Like something felt very special, very unique about the way they celebrated mass. Like when, like it felt like you were in a different world, you know, when you stepped into mass there. Um, and one day I was at like a used bookstore, and uh, I found a, a used like um, like missile, you know, a little hand missile right. for mass. Yeah, yeah. Um, from the old days, you know, at Mass parts in Latin and English. I was like, oh, this is really cool. Um, I thought, well, it might help me follow along with Mass on the television, on EWTN. Um, but little did I know that, like, the the Mass not just only changed the language, but, it like, the structure of the Mass underwent some changes. Right. Um, at Vatican II, prayers were added, uh, prayers were dropped. Um, and then, you know, I noticed that the missile, and the missile that I had, all the entire Mass was in Latin. I thought, well, that's interesting. Ma- the Mass on television, there's, like, prayers in my book that are not in the Mass on the television. There's, like, instructions and things, um, rubrics in my book that are not being followed on the television. So I did a little more research. Um, and then I found out that Mass used to be offered in Latin. Like, the whole thing was in Latin. Um, so, I, you know, I read about it, and I looked up pictures and articles about it, and then I found out that this form of a Mass is still offered. Um, so this was about, this was when I was in about 7th, 8th grade. So okay. about 2007, 2008. Okay. Which would have been when you were in elementary school. I was in uh, fourth grade, yeah. Okay, yeah, I was in some fourth grade, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I thought, ooh, I'd like to go to one of these sometime. Um, and I went to one, and I was one of those people, like, I went to it, and I loved it. I, was, I loved it. From Did you go to high mass? I went, yes, I, w- okay. I w- went to high mass. So I also hope high mass is very beautiful and yeah. things are sung and chanted. Yeah. Whereas low mass is a very quiet experience. There's no, nothing is sung or anything. Sometimes there might be hymns, but the priest doesn't sing any of his mass parts. Um, but yeah, I, I was confused. I was like, I don't, I, I don't really, it's kind of hard to follow along, you know, because sometimes the choir is singing. Um, whereas like the priest in the Latin mass, he's, he either says or he prays everything, the entire text of the mass. Um, so there's times where the priest um, might be praying something silently, but the choir will be, be singing out loud what he just prayed. Right. Um, yeah. So, you know, and the Eucharistic prayer is silent uh, at the Latin Mass. So, I mean, there are things I was not familiar with, and I was like, oh, it's kind of hard to follow along. Um, I thought, wow, this is something so beautiful. Uh, I like how the ma- this, this way of presenting the Mass 
So I just started going to it again and again and again. And um, now about, I don't know, how many years later? Uh, almost 10 years, no. no. Yeah, 10 years. <laughs> yeah, wow, gee. <laughs> wow, I've been going to Latin Mass for 10 years almost. Yeah, but 10 years on and off, yeah. Now 10 years later, on and off, I am... I don't need a missile to follow along at Mass. Um, you know. Um, I mean, I might not... <laughs> the readings, I, I, I might need a missile, but... Right, know, yeah, yeah. The basic structure, the flow of the Mass, I don't need a, a missile to follow along. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's how I fa- fell in love with the Latin Mass. Um, I think something that off puts a lot of people about the Latin Mass is the language. Uh, and that it's, you know, it can be more difficult uh, to follow along. But I think, like, there's so many, there's hundreds of saints that went to this Mass. Right, yeah. That's that's one of the things that I think about a lot. It's just, like, because um, on one hand, I do think that, I mean, I'm certainly grateful for Vatican II, and I'm certainly grateful for the form of the Mass we have now, because I honestly, uh, I, I find it hard to believe that I would have uh, really had a care or desire to go to Mass at all, uh, at least speculatively, um, if it wasn't the way it is. But at the same time, most of the stories I've, I've heard from people who love the Latin Mass is... They just have they've gone and they've just encountered this profound beauty about it, um, and that's I think something that's very needed for our time is um, beauty to draw people. I mean, Bishop Barron talks about this a lot. Yes, like yeah. evangelizing through beauty, and I think just just the, yeah, just the beauty of the Latin Mass and the, the sacred music and stuff like that can be by itself just a, a great um, factor, a great like source of of evangelization that isn't really found elsewhere in our culture very much anymore. Yeah. Um, so that's why I think it's so important to preserve the Latin Mass and to to continue to celebrate both forms of the Mass. Is because I do think generally that like not everybody will experience that beauty, mm-hmm. but I think that some people will. And so I think it's really important to maintain that. Um, and that's also, you know, it's not just the beauty aspect of it either. It's just there's a whole lot of theology and stuff within the Latin Mass that um, people may not yeah. either didn't get transferred or, or just you know people don't really recognize yeah. in in our own mass. some advice like that I that I've found helpful like you know I've brought plenty of people to their first Latin mass because um, especially when I'm home you know I'm like I'll hit up friends from high school like hey you want to come to Latin mass with me because <laughs> um, that's actually when I'm home that's actually I I go to Latin mass almost exclusively. Um, Granted, the Latin Mass is about, it's about 40 minutes from my house. But when, okay. when Usually when I'm home, it's only for like two, three week periods. So I'm usually not home for very long yeah. periods of time at work. Um, so I'm like, oh, might as well get my fill of my Latin Mass. I mean, I, I mean we have it here in Stubino at the local parish twice a week. And then we have it on campus almost every week. Right. Um, but it's just different from like, you know, being in a parish community and stuff like that. Yeah. So when I'm home, I, I go to the Latin Mass almost every day, honestly. Um, at least four or five times a week, um, and so sometimes you know I like I like bringing people with me because it's lonely just driving by myself. Yeah, that uh, sounds like me in the Spanish mass at home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, then you know, so I, I've I've brought a lot of pe- introduced a lot of people to Latin mass, and some advice I give them is that, well, you know, especially being in California, occasionally you might have to go to Spanish mass, you know. Maybe you you know you missed the English mass or your parish or something you know or they might have a Spanish mass or bilingual mass or um, for whatever reason or if, you know you're traveling America and that's the only mass you can get to um, is that you know you know the prayers of the mass in English right like if you go to mass every week or if you're all catechized you know what's going on like right yeah yeah uh, and even in the the ordinary form the the mass of Vatican II. There's prayers the priest doesn't say out loud, yeah. Um, yeah. And the Latin Master happens to be one of them. Like you know, like you know the structure of the Mass. You know, it begins with uh, the penitential rite where we express sorrow for our sins, and you have the the I confess, and you have the Lord have mercy, and then on Sundays there's the glory to God, and then that's followed by readings on Sundays, two readings and the gospel each day, one reading and the gospel, 
And then, you know, you know what comes after that, right? The the gifts come up to the altar, then the priest, you know, he washes his hands, he, you know, offers the bread and the wine up to the Lord, and then you move into the Eucharistic career, and then you have communion, and then you have the dismissal. Right. Right? Um, so I, I feel like, you know, most of us, even if we went to Mass in Spanish, we're not off-put. We still know what's going on. Yeah. Um, we might not understand the readings, but, you know, I... I I think very few people would skip mass just because it's in Spanish. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think that's something helpful in like when somebody's attending Latin mass is that you might not be able to hear prayers, but the structure, the basic structure of the mass, granted there are some prayers that I took out um, after Vatican II, the basic structure, it's the same. It, yeah. it starts with confessing your sins and then it moves into the readings and then it moves into the priest offering the gifts up to the Lord and then washing his hands uh, and then moving into the Eucharistic prayer um, and then communion, you know, same structure. Yeah. Uh, so that's something I've found helpful. Yeah, that's true. That's true. To just, uh, yeah, to just say, yeah, uh, it's, I mean, obviously it's the same sacrifice, so. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, how about we, uh, listen to a brief ad while I gather my thoughts and then we can come back. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll be right back, listeners. <sighs> Traveling is so expensive these days, especially overseas. With Franciscan oh, University's some... study abroad to... program, you can spend a semester tucked away in a beautiful 14th century monastery in the foothills of Gaming, Austria. This location is ideal, for Austria is nestled in the heart of Europe. The program offers 53 class days and 52 travel days, with many school-sponsored excursions to bustling cities such as Rome, Assisi, Salzburg, and Vienna. Aside from tuition, there is only a small fee in addition to travel the continent. The curriculum is tied into experiences and European culture. It is a great way to step out of what you know and to see the world. Students that have undergone this program in years past have come back to say that this experience is one of prayer, of self-reflection, and a wonderful way to get closer to God. It is a way to find and to enrich yourself. Broaden your horizons next semester. Austria, a journey of the mind, the feet, and of the heart. See you in Gaming. I'm going to rudely erupt that song because <laughs> we're running... <laughs> Kind of low. I mean, not super low on time, but, you know, I just have that power as a ra radio DJ to just stop a song three seconds into the song and just say, you know what? We're not going to play that song. <laughs> and I, I'm sure uh, bigger radio station DJs don't have that luxury. But given that I am, of course, an anti-DJ and I my goal is to turn this into a talk show. Well, you see, dear listeners, I do have that authority. I do have that power, and I don't feel bad to use it. So, Dennis would love a caller to call in and maybe ask a question. Please. Um, Wait, what's this? I'm going to put this on Facebook Live. Maybe that will make people call in. Our number is 740-283. Yes. Wait, 740-283-6297. Six two nine seven. That's seven four zero two eight three six two nine seven. Now, in the meantime, um, Dennis said he would like to share a funny story that happened from his freshman year. Yeah, we have to go in Facebook Live. There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. They won't be able to see us, but they can. They can listen to my beautiful voice. They can listen. All right. Um. So this is these are from my freshman or sophomore year. I think freshman year. So, um, at this time, I think I was in the priest discernment program. Maybe not. Anyways, I was living in the same wing of the hall as um, the um, freshmen and sophomores in the priest discernment program. Right. Good old and um, floor. one evening, this was like late at night, I was like going back to my room. I don't think I had my glasses on. Actually, I didn't have my glasses on. This is probably why it happened. So, my room happened to have the same configuration as the room right next to me. As do most of the dorm rooms, right? Like, 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 as in, like, my bed was bunked. Oh, like, okay. And okay. I was on the like the bottom bunk. Okay. And this other room, the bed was bunked in the same place, <laughs> in the room, with, yeah. Anyways, so it's late at night, and you might be able to see where this is going. 
Uh, I was really tired. I was like looking for like just laying in my bed, just getting into bed and just falling asleep. I I opened the door of what I think is my room, right? <laughs> and then I, I I go over to what I think is my bed, <laughs> and I go to lay down, and somebody's in the bed. <laughs> Uh, and that's because it was not my bed. It was somebody else's bed. Um, it was Joseph Rooney. I don't know if Joseph Rooney is listening to no this. Way. But it was Joseph <laughs> Rooney's bed. Anyway, so it's like, so like I actually wake him up. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm sure. And he's confused. <laughs> I'm confused. And he's like, Dennis, uh, you're in the wrong room. I'm like, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to go to my room now. <laughs> yep, so that's wow. been the... Most awkward moment I've had at Franciscan by far. That is, uh, well, that's a funny story. I, I've never heard that story actually. Um, hmm. Well, uh, I suppose I'm trying to think of a funny story to tell from one of my. Oh, yeah, okay, I can tell a funny story. So <clears throat> I was in uh, Thomistic Traditions, mm-hmm. um, which is a philosophy class. Yep. Uh, ne- uh, last last fall, so yeah, a couple semesters ago, and uh, of course Joseph Tweed is a character, and he was in that class too. And Joseph Tweed, of course, dear listeners, he will be the guest next week, um, so uh, you can get excited for that. But anyways, Joseph mm-hmm. Tweed, uh, we had a, we had the, we have this professor, um, who was a he's a young guy, just he just got hired like three years ago when I was a freshman. His name is uh, Doctor Dom. Mm-hmm. And, um, so he's a really laid back guy. And before, I forgot the circumstances, but for whatever reason, I think it was because we just had a ton of homework in this class, like a yeah. lot of reading mm-hmm. and a lot, uh, not just reading, but also just like doing outlines on St. Thomas Aquinas, which is not fun because Aquinas doesn't waste a word. No, so he it's doesn't. Really hard to, it's hard to make an outline of him without like, yeah, it's really hard to simplify what he's saying. But anyway, so. Um, so Joseph Tweed, uh, before class one, it was like a minute before class and he has his back facing the, the door and, um, he's saying, you know what, if, I, what would happen if I just took a gun and I just shot Dr. Tom? What <laughs> on earth? <laughs> wow. And that the, isn't a Joseph Tweed thing to say. Yeah. And the, but the, the funny thing was. As that was happening, as he's saying, what would happen if I just took a gun and shot Dr. Dom? Dr. Dom walks in the room. <laughs> oh, my. And he heard him say Goodness. this. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, what would happen, Joseph? Go on, finish the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> it was so uh, funny. Uh, it was just perfect timing. Um, yeah, I actually have another story kind of like that. I w- my freshman year, I was I had Doctor Harold for a philosophy class mm-hmm. in the Saint Joseph Center. So, if, for the listeners who don't know, Trinity Hall and the Saint Joseph Center are on the exact opposite sides of campus. Yes, it makes for some very painful walks in the snow to class in it, the winter. Yes, yes, yeah. And so, at the time, actually, it wasn't my first semester; it was my second semester because I only had four classes in my second semester, which was crazy. I mean, it was very, very easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the exception of Dr. Minto's class, which made up for all the busy work that I Ooh, did not yep, have to do. Yep, that's Anyways, so, fun. so Dr. Harold's class was at 11 o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and that was my first class of the day. So most of the time what I would do is I would go to, uh, like on Thursdays, I would go to mass, to morning prayer and a mass mm-hmm. and to breakfast, but then I'd go back and take a nap until 11, uh, just because I had that luxury. Yeah. And uh, so... This one day, I, I went back to my room and took a nap, and I woke mm-hmm. up at 10.58. Now, those of you who are listening who have had Dr. Harold will know that Dr. Harold never, ever, ever comes to class on time. He's always a good three or four minutes late, and by the time he takes a roll, you're probably eight minutes into the class. Mm-hmm. So I woke up at 10.58, and... um. I was like, oh my gosh. I, I looked at my phone. I jumped out of bed and grabbed my backpack and just started running, like we're <laughs> booking it for St. Joseph Center. And like, I, I only made it like halfway because my backpack was really heavy and I didn't want to run anymore. So I just wound up walking like half of the way there. And it was so perfect because I was walking down the hallway 
and I heard him taking roll, and I could hear he was like getting close to the S's on uh-huh. the last name. So he was like saying like R or whatever, and then he started the S's. And then right when he said Simon, I walk in the room, I was like, here. <laughs> it was perfect timing. Uh, and that was probably like 11 07. Like it was way late, but that was the luxury you have at Dr. Harold is that you're always late. He's always late to class. Anyways. Wow, nobody's yeah. calling in. Do I know. people not this love is, us? I want so people sad. to call in. Our number is 740-283-6297. I told all those stories to stall, and they just didn't pay off. You know, they didn't nope, Nobody's calling in. But Dennis, I mean, we've had so many just conversations. We yeah. should be able to think of something else to talk about. Um, Other than liturgy? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Just How about the vernacular? Oh, the vernacular? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes. Okay. So... Well, how about you tell us about the vernacular? Yes. So this is an invention of a, a very terrible person. Father Sean Rubish. No. <laughs> no. Um, uh, a person by the name of Jacob Watson. He made up the vernacular? Yes. Really? He is the originator of the vernacular. I mean, I'd, I'd made a couple puns with my name, my na- last name before. Dennis Vu. That's, that's with a V. Um... But Jacob just took it to a whole new level. And so, so you know, Vu is a very short last name. Right. Um, and it's also very common, that vowel sound, ooh, ooh yeah. is extremely common. English, Latin, Spanish, it's very common in, uh, phonetically in different languages. So what Jacob Watson likes to do is just throw a V in front of like any O and you know you got the vernacular. Yeah. For example, um, Robbie, what what is holy 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 in Latin? Sanctus, sanctus, sanctus. Jacob Watson would say sanctus, sanctus, sanctus. Uh, what is that Hebrew word that we say before the gospel reading? Hallelujah. Uh, I think you mean Alleluia. <laughs> um, so yes, that's that's the vernacular. It's, it gets quite annoying, um, and it's it's like a contagious disease. Oh, somebody's oh, calling. We have a caller. Thank you, wow. caller. Here we go. Hello. You're you're uh, uh, you're on the Rambling with Rob show. Oh wow. Yes. Who is calling? I can't hear them. California. Jesus? I, I still can't hear yeah. that. Okay. Uh, Wait, Jesus is have... calling? <laughs> it's great to have you on the show, Jesus. Where in California are you? Oh, thank you. Uh, um, I'm from the di- San Bernardino. From the Diocese of San Bernardino? Colton. Okay. <clears throat> How did you find out about the show? Uh, I follow uh, Dennis. On, uh, oh, on you follow on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's Jesus. Facebook okay, Twitter, okay. Instagram. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for calling. Um, yeah, no, no problem. Um, so I just have a question for Dennis. Sure. Um, What's it say? Now, you know, okay. since he's from, uh, well, I mean, we're both from California, and he knows that, you know, the charismatic movement is, is pretty huge here in California. Um, what is okay? Wait, you know, put on, put on in his thoughts. What what does he think? The how do we find a balance? Because when we create ministries, um, we want to create balance. But I feel like there's people who are who are, love the spirituality of charismatic, charismatic, um, you know, feel, and then there's the people who love the church and. Um, so my question is, how or what do you think will be a way to find a balance in, in that for, for ministry? Hmm. So basically balance between the charismatic and the, and the traditional movement. Hmm. <clears throat> yes. That's, yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, thank you so much. Because um, or, or, I, I, I see that the, the Franciscans, they, they do a very good job at that. So I'm wondering... How, how that's possible, or how, how is, what is it? Is it something that's causing it, or, 
Hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Robbie, did you have any thoughts? Uh, yeah, well, I think, I think the first thing is you have to have both options available mm-hmm. in order to, you know, even have um, both yeah. things. Um, I know for me personally, there really wasn't either. I mean, we had like praise and worship music, but that w- I wouldn't really say it was necessarily charismatic. Um, and I, we certainly didn't really have much of a, a Latin mass um, option yeah. <laughs> near us. So I think that's the first thing is, is I think it would be awesome if more parishes offered uh, like the Latin mass. I mean, the thing I find so unique about Franciscan's culture and like a guy like you, Dennis, is you could see somebody like you at a festival of praise on a Saturday night just, you know, standing up, hands raised high, hands praising air, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then um, on Sunday morning, see him at Latin Mass. And I think that's incredibly unique. Yeah. And it shows both the charismatic and the the traditional elements of the church um, very well. So I think that's, I would say that's the first step is just to even have both options available. I don't know what else you would say, Dennis. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, here at Franciscan, we have rather unique. Uh, Franciscan is a very unique place, um, and that we have these different options available. And I think, I mean, a lot of that is that the population of Franciscan, the student body, um, that's like you know, it includes a lot of people who like Latin mass, and uh, you know, a vast majority of the students who go to Franciscan are into you know, praise and worship, you know charismatic expressions of prayer and ministry. Um, so, I mean, here, for instance, we kind of have that built in just because of the kind of the people we draw here. Um, but I think, yeah, having, like Robbie said, having that available, because, um, like, if you don't have the Latin Mass available and people aren't used to it, because, I mean, the Latin Mass is something, you know, like, you probably didn't, you know, the first time you went, like, you know, the first time I went, I was kind of confused by it. Um, but then, you know, there's a beauty to it. So, you know, as I yeah. exposed myself more and more to that um, and understood and was catechized and read stuff about why things were the way that they were, uh, then I came to appreciate that. Um, and I think when I, even when I first came to Franciscan, I was a little really skeptical of, you know, charismatic movement. Uh, charismatic expressions of prayer, um, but the more I got to know people um, who are involved in the charismatic renewal, um, one of the professors here, uh, Dr. Alan Shrek, uh, in the theology department, has been involved with the charismatic renewal, f- you know, since the beginning of it. Um, so yeah, I think yeah, exposing, having that available to the parishioners, the people, um, and having opportunities to catechize them. Um, about, you know, the Latin Mass, you know, take them to Latin Mass, catechize them about that, um, you know, take them to, you know, a Mass that's offered, you know, at Orientum, you know, where the priest and people are both facing the altar together, and then catechizing them about that, um, taking them to charismatic prayer, um, and catechizing them about the charismatic gifts. Uh, yeah, so I mean, those are my thoughts. What do you think about that, Jesus? Great. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for the answer. I think it's it's true. Um, I mean, exposure to you know both spiritualities is kind of it's kind of great, and uh, I totally agree. And yeah, it's just finding a balance. Yeah. Within the, whether your parish or your diocese. Yeah, I think yeah. I think one thing that's important is not <clears throat> like not defining yourself as as one or the other, as charismatic or as a traditional, yeah. because the church is both charismatic and traditional by its nature. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it's important that you, you should be open to both um, charismatic forms of prayer and traditional forms of prayer. Um, yeah. yeah. And I think, like, here at Franciscan, you know, I see, you know, some people I'll see at Latin Mass and at Praise and Worship. I know plenty of people who are, you know, they're in, they're in the front row, you know, at the festivals of praise at, or at Tuesday night, praise and worship. Um, the festivals of praise are, you know, travel long praise and worship and adoration that we have uh, once a month here at Franciscan. Um, all of those same people, I see them, you know, some of the females at, you know, the festivals 
of praise, art, praise, and worship. They wear chapel veils. Yeah. You know, traditional sign of respect for our Lord and the Blessed Sacrament uh, by women. Um, and you know, see those some of those same people at Latin Mass. Um, and I think here at Franciscan, you know, sometimes there's might be tension, you know, between different groups, but. I think for the most part, people here at Franciscan, I think we all realize that the most important thing is love for our Lord, and that everything in our faith ultimately is directed to Jesus Christ and putting ourselves into intimacy with Jesus Christ. You know, the Latin Mass, the point of it, you know, is to get into contact with our Lord. Um, charismatic prayer, um, point of it is to come into contact in a deeper way with the Holy Ghost of the Holy Spirit, um, deeper contact with our Lord. Um, so I see, you know, that's something I, I found really helpful at Franciscans that, you know, there's different ways people like to pray here, but um, for the most part, I think people get along because we realize that all of us are trying to get to heaven. All of us are aiming for a deeper encounter uh, with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, and so, I mean, you know, that's, when when you lose focus of that, you know, and that can happen in any ministry um, in the church, you know, if it just becomes about the externals of the liturgy, or if it just becomes, come, you know, seeking the more um, charismatic gifts, like prophecy, the, the extraordinary gifts of the Holy Spirit, like prophecy, or healing, or the gift of tongues, uh, for its own sake, then you lose sight of Jesus. Um, you know, that's just that's yeah. a danger in any area of ministry. Well, hey, Seuss. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much for calling. Did you want to add anything else? Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Um, I think it was, it was, it was nar um, narrowed down pretty, pretty nicely. And I think, I think I totally agree with, with you guys. Um, now I'm gonna leave you guys with a question. Um, um, so as for, and I'll let you guys go. Uh, for mass setting, uh, is do you prefer the Misa de Angelis or the Misa Ortiz Factor? Ooh. Ooh. Thank you for that question, uh, Jesus. Well, uh, and thank you so much again for calling. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for taking my call. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. God bless. God bless you too. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so he asked, let's see, the Misa de Angelus is the one that you hear a lot. Uh, right, and I, I think, didn't Pope Benedict say, like, everybody should know, like, know the Misa de Angelus? Um, well, Vatican II did say that the laity ought to know the responses and the parts of the Mass proper to them, um, in Latin. Okay, so the Misa de Angelus is, you know, it goes, let's see, um, Gloria in excelsis Deo. Right. Or, um. Or, or, oh no 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 no! Yeah, the, it's uh, song, song to who, song to who, song to Right. Yeah, it's it, um, uh, I I really like that one, but I think I prefer the Orbis, Misa Orbis Factor, just because the De Angelis is used a lot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually I'm not familiar with the second one, the what was it called? Uh, Orbis Factor. Okay. O R B I S. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I forget how it goes, but I I prefer it just because I get lost that often. You know, a good example of a balance is my two favorite glorias are from the Missy Angelus and the Mass of the Renewal, Mass of Renewal, <laughs> 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 which is when we do it, my Francis. As like. long as you don't like the Gloria, Gloria, <laughs> or the um, I cannot stand the My Little Pony one just because um, the My Little Pony one, the My yes. Glory to God, glory oh, yeah, to okay, God. Yeah, okay, I can't say yeah, that one either. I can't, no. yeah. Which, unfortunately, it's so widespread. Like, so many parishes do that. It drives me crazy. Uh, anyways, yeah. Well, uh, I'm so uh, I'm so thrilled that we had a caller who has no affiliation with Franciscan. Yeah! And is not my family member. I'm, I'm amazed. Um, so thank you again, Jesus, for calling. And... Um, you know, how appropriate that Jesus would call us because, of course, um, <laughs> you know, we um, were coming up on the 
Advent season. Yes. It's not yet Christmas. It is not yet Christmas. Even though I'm so dumb. You know, I had uh, uh, I had a good conversation with some with um, our friend Matthew Krause, who was on the show earlier this year. And, um, he, you know, he was like, one of one of his professors here was saying that he listens to Christmas music, music all year round oh. um, because, like, you know, it, it's like, well, you don't, you don't only pray the joyful mysteries or like you don't only meditate on the the nativity, you know, during Christmas season, you meditate on that all year round. Yeah. So he's like, if we're Catholic and, you know, like it seems like we should at least be thinking about our Lord's humble birth and like his humble beginnings or his entire life um, in humility and poverty. Um, and so he says he listens to Christmas music all year round, except for Advent, because Advent is the time of preparation for it. I thought that was really cool, because yeah. I normally, I mean, normally, like when Christmas is over, you just put away Christmas music and stuff like that. Yeah. And of course, playing songs like you know, uh, "Rocking Around the Christmas Tree" and you know, "Feliz Navidad," songs like that. It's like okay, I'm probably only going to listen to that during Christmas time. Mm -hmm. But like you know, songs uh, that just relate to the birth of Jesus, you know, like o "Holy Night" or something like that. Fun fact: uh, I've heard <laughs> "Rocking Around the Christmas Tree" played at Christmas Mass. <laughs> As so, I've heard, Feliz Navidad plays at, plays at Christmas Mass. Yeah, so Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree perpetually... I, I like it, but it, it now triggers me because it brings back bad memories of a parish that I, well, I no longer go to anyway. Yeah. Well, I, um, I'm i so grateful for... Dennis, thank you so much for coming on the show mm -hmm. tonight. Well, it's my pleasure. Jesus, thank you so much for the call. And Tigger. Uh, and uh, I'm glad to see that our microphones are working because we didn't get any other callers calling in about that. And, you know, folks, it's been, you know, it's been a great semester so far in terms of my radio show. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. And have one more at least next week. We'll, we'll be having Joseph Tweed. Um, just another classic granny on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and you won't want to miss it. So we'll be back next week. Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. in Milwaukee, and I don't even know if you're uh, in Arizona, if you're even on say, if you're like Savings Time That's or something like that. Rome. Probably like Wait, this show's morning. at 7, right? Yeah. That's 2 in the morning? Wait, Sarah said, I can't do math. 1 a.m.? Uh, we got 1 a.m. 1 a.m.? Yeah. 1 a.m. Rome time. <clears throat> yeah, there you go. So if I should tell the Pope, maybe if he's up late one night and he can't sleep, he should turn on my radio show. Or um, <laughs> since I'm the one with the priest friend at the Vatican who knows the Pope, I, 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 Ooh, I, yeah, I'll pass the message along to Frankie. I yeah. mean, his holiness, Pope Francis. <laughs> 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 well, folks, <clears throat> it's been real. It's been fun. It's been real, real fun. fun. God bless you and have a great rest of your night. He's